hands. It, it's, it's, oh, my it's, God. It's just like America itself under Barry Obama. This is what happens when you elect a progressive psychotic. It permeates the entire society, pollutes the military, and virtually a fish rots from the head down. We all know that. We're trying to fight it. We're doing the best we can. And we, the people, speak out every day. I'm so proud that you listen to the show. And as a token of my gratitude, I'm sending you not one, but three copies of Government Zero. Three free copies to, to the captain on the line for himself and two other friends. And I want to leave you with one thought. If any of your men get court-martialed for doing the right thing, you've got to let us know. I'll do a fundraiser for them, as I've done in the past. I've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for various soldiers who were unfairly condemned by uh, Bush's military, now under Obama's military. I bought a car. Didn't we buy a car for a, a soldier? I forget his name. The dog guy. Anybody remember him? No. Who? Helmet? Helmet? Brent Gromit. Haven't heard from him since, but I hope he's enjoying the car. Never even got a letter, a call, an email saying, thanks, Dr. Savage. The dog and I are enjoying it. But we do the best we can. Thanks for listening. Now let's go on to another caller. Heartbreaking. Just heartbreaking. Women for work, men for pleasure. Gee, I didn't know that. Never heard for pleasure and when he that's their that's their cultural view yes that is their cultural i don't i don't think we should say it again on this radio show because it's heard in on ksmo in san francisco uh well maybe we should say it often enough maybe most of the population will find the jerusalem they've been looking for and they'll all move to afghanistan so let's keep repeating it maybe they'll leave the city and we can have it back to the normal people again maybe they'll flee to afghanistan where they belong Hey, that would be great, Michael. But I do have to tell you that when my husband was embedded with one of the Afghan uh, troops, it was a tribal leader who had a young boy traveling with him every single day in his jeep. Ugh. And when the men... I, I don't understand this. This is the sickest thing you can do to a boy is rape him. You know, you rape a boy, you know what you turn him into a sick person the rest of his life, and the whole society then becomes sick. So what I'm hearing from you is that if that's part of their culture... Then the men who were doing the raping were raped as young boys themselves, which is why they're so demented. It's why the whole culture is demented. What are we doing there? I don't even know what we're doing there, for God's sakes. I don't know. I ask my husband that on a daily basis, and he just shakes his head, and he says, it's my job. That's it. He's been well, I understand that. That's what it takes as guys with with guts, and they, they're not allowed to question. Ours is not to question why. Ours is just to do and die. That adage apparently is very popular right now in Obama's new military. Okay, it's uh, it's you know I could say it's heartbreaking, but I'm not surprised. I didn't know about the women are for work, um, uh, boys are for fun thing. I never heard it, but now it explains the whole de dementia of that entire society. And all I can say is get our troops out of Afghanistan now. You know what? Let them all go to hell. It's that simple. Stay in the line. Two copies. One for you. One for your brave husband. Government zero on the Savage Nation. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Can we ever regain the masculine pride in our nation? That really is the only question that I'm, I ask myself every day. Can this country be saved from falling into... A, such a state of disrepair that can never be fixed again. I ask it, I swear to you, day and night of myself. If we get through Barry's to, to dictatorship, if we get through Barry's reign of terror, and we get Trump as president, can he really rebuild what he broke, what, what the other one broke? I don't know. I ask it. I, I hope so. KSFO, Mo, welcome. Thanks for calling. What's on your mind, Mo? Hi, Dr. Savage. Uh, I'm originally from Afghanistan born and raised there, and this is really disgusting what we do to these soldiers. Uh, they actually, not, by not following the orders by their superiors, to turn their heads around. Uh, actually, it's not in Afghanistan, not just in Pashtun era, but it's in the whole country. As we speak right now, you know, there are dancing houses, cabarets, that they bring boys, little boys, they, they see them for them from their parents, and they dance in Kabul. Mo, Mo, I want to ask you in, in all sincerity, you're an Afghani, I assume. Yes. Are these people, do these people consider themselves Muslims? Yes, they do. Actually, you know what they do? It's after dancing, or even during dancing, they say, what time is it? Oh, it's time to pray. They just go to prayer room, and they pray together, and they come back, and then they, they watch people, I mean, boys dancing. And all this... But wait, how can they call themselves 
Muslims and rape boys. How is that compatible with Islam? Or, or shall I ask the pregnant question, is this permitted in Islam? I am asking the question nakedly. I do not know the answer. Uh, no, it's not, actually. Uh, the severest uh, punishment in, in Islam is reserved for, um, actually, uh, homosexuality. Uh, just like All right, so we see pictures of Muslims, fanatics in ISIS, throwing homosexuals off roofs, and yet we hear that these people who call themselves Muslims are raping boys as part of their tradition. How How is that happening then? Because it serves their purpose, you know, so it's, it's forbidden for other people, but it's not for them. That's how, that's how mullahs work, okay? Oh, it's okay. the mullahs, so they're the worst of the worst. The mullahs are the worst of the worst, in other words. Well, exactly. Exactly. And they do the same thing get from, from Pakistan all the way to, to uh, mm. Africa. That's what they do. And then a lot of illiterate people, unfortunately, Muslim countries are full of illiterate people, full of people who just blindly follow the religion from the mouth of their mullahs. That's what the... the in other words, it's hypocrisy to the nth degree. Well... I don't know what we're even doing there. At the end of the day, I think we should just get our troops out of there and let them do what they do, which they've been doing for thousands of years. I mean, the fact of the matter is we have broken roads, we have broken schools, we have broken virtually everything in this country. I think we should focus on fixing America and let those countries take care of themselves. Mo, th Mo you're not the gentleman who owns the, uh, the Afghani restaurant in San Francisco that I met, are you? No, no, I'm not. No, no. No, I'm not. I have a, I have an acquaint, I have an acquaintance, who whose name is Mo. I guess everyone's name is Mo for Muhammad. It's like Jewish names are, are everyone's name is Mo because it's Moses. But the thing is, he would he jokingly said to me, it's the funniest joke I ever heard from a Muslim man. He said, <clears throat> you know, he said uh, we have a saying in the restaurant business. We who are Muslims, he said, when Jews fast, Muslims starve. I laughed hysterically because he was talking about his restaurant business, and I thought it was a way to bridge the gap between cultures. I thank you. Hold on the line. I'll send you a copy of the only gift I can give you that matters, which is a copy of my book, Government Zero, and it does not come in a plain brown wrapper. It comes with a red, white, and blue picture of me. Actually, it's the best I've ever looked in all of my books. I swear, to, I don't know how this happened. The older I look, the better looking I get. I don't know what it is. It must be the uh, garlic or something that I eat. Could be the vodka. It's hard to say. 855-400 says it's God's will. That's all I can say. Because tomorrow, God only knows what God will do to us or bring to us, right? Oh, here we are. It's another Friday, a gorgeous day. It's Fleet Week. It is Columbus Day Parade, the Columbus Day Parade this Sunday in San Francisco, where I generally go. And then I have a little announcement for my loyal listeners. I will be on the air Monday and Tuesday. And I'm going away on, at a last-minute vacation next Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I'm going out of the country. I'm doing the exact opposite of what I said I would never do. I'm leaving. Just before the book launch, I need a break. So I'm going to be away for a number of days. We'll have Brian Sussman filling in and a couple of other good people and maybe a best of. Maybe I could report. I think I should report in, Robert. Don't you think I should call in from my location for fun? Because Michael never goes on vacation. Wouldn't it be fun to hear from me whether I'm suffering or not suffering? Whether I actually enjoy uh, sitting on a friend's yacht in the Caribbean for a week? <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I do know what I'm going to do with myself. I'm working on another book. See, I don't like to just do nothing, and I'm not one into water sports. I know that has a double connotation, but I'm not into it either way. The, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, the man who knew too much. The thing, the thing is... Uh, I'm not really into the whole scuba duba scooby dooby doo, and people sit on big yachts. What they do is eat and drink. I got to watch out. I mean, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to sit in the shady part of the boat in the shade, and I'm going to work on my Teddy book, which will be out next spring. That's it. My next book is about me and Teddy. The pictures are unbelievable. It's about me and Teddy, long overdue. And then I'm going to walk around the town in the morning, walk around the town in the evening. And I'll be back before I know it, or I won't be back before I know it. I'll be somewhere else before I know it. In either case, I won't be here. That's why I say, be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. If you don't feel good on a Friday, you're a, you're a real depressive. 
That's all I could say. I don't care if you're schlepping around on a Monday and don't feel good or a Tuesday. That's uh, okay, that's understand. But if you're still depressed Friday, coming into a Friday night, the sun is out, you have no pain, you got some money in your pocket, you're a very sad person. You have nothing in your life. The fact of the matter is last night was the star show of the asteroid. What was falling in the sky? I don't know. I looked all night. Nothing fell. I kept waiting for stars and shooting stars. No, no matter which way I looked, I put on night vision goggles. I saw no shooting stars. I have, like, second-generation night vision goggles. They're perfectly legal. Amazing how they light up dark spaces. But I didn't see any shooting stars. Let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation. Larry on WABC, what's on your mind? Fire away. Dr. Savage, thank you for letting me on. Uh, on Fleet Week, I want to let you know that uh, a lot of my friends and family have sat down and talked about you, and we've compared you to the famous uh, Edward R. Murrow of yesterday. And the only difference between you two is you don't smoke 60 to 80 cigarettes a day. Right, and he didn't have a Bronx accent. That was his deficit. If he had only had a Bronx accent, he would have gone very far. Absolutely. But, you know, he fought... McCarthy, the vicious McCarthy senator, and you're fighting today's administration. So we saw a parallel in both of you. And uh, we all want to thank you, me, my family, and my friends, for doing what you're doing. It's so important. Well, what can I say? Well, I could argue with you over Senator McCarthy, but I won't do that because he wasn't the devil that people made him out to be. He was a genuine war hero. They made him into, they made his heroism into a deficit by calling him Tail Gunner Joe, as if flying in the tail of a, of a B-29 bomber or whatever, a B-24 Liberator as a tail gunner was somehow a deficit. He was a very brave man, and he had the nerve to take on the actual hidden communists in government and in Hollywood, and for that they condemned him because he exposed them. But I don't want to go into that because people misinterpret McCarthyism. It was not what it, what it was alleged to be. The man was a patriot trying to get the, the uh, bull weevils out of the woodwork, so to speak. But I thank you for your compliments. Thanks for hanging on. I send you a copy of uh, my great government zero where my cover is a collectible. The picture of me alone is worth the admission, I would say. But that's not what it's about. It's not about the picture. Scott, another caller from New York City. I don't know how you're all hanging on so long, but Scott, make your point quickly. 30 seconds or less. Thank you. All right. Dr. Savage, just in time for a publication of your book, Government Zero, our government has zero aircraft carriers in the Persian Gulf as of 11 p.m. Eastern last night. How is that possible? Where did our fleet go? Well, this was announced early August. If you Google no aircraft carrier in Persian Gulf, you'll see it was on CNN in early August. And I don't know why the Joint uh, Central Command allowed this to happen, but you can be sure the Russians factor that in in their actions and the wait a minute but when did we withdraw the aircraft carrier what date do you know uss teddy roosevelt left last night as of 11 p.m eastern time and it was announced so in a wait a minute in addition to obama in addition to obama quaking in his boots over putin bringing in troops and airplanes and the chinese coming in he he withdrew our fleet from the area to make sure that uh, what they're not attacked well, despite, uh, for maintenance reasons, it was announced in early August. And in the middle of a war? In the middle of a war zone, he says we're, we're withdrawing our Navy for maintenance reasons? And the Iranian giveaway deal on nuclear weapons coming online now. So, you know, this is a nexus of uh, our government. Oh, this is sickening. And this shows you who Barry is. Speak loudly and carry a limp stick. you got to hear the speech of his that I played at the beginning of the show that's astonishing. When you listen to it, it sounds like a kid in a schoolyard who finally been caught out called out by someone for being what he is you have gotta hear this all over again stay in the line here is Barack Obama getting angry at CBS News' Steve Croft for daring to challenge him on being a weak loser in plain English listen to clip one all over again a year ago again. when we did this interview there was some saber rattling between the United States and Russia on the Ukrainian border now it's also going on in Syria you said a year ago that the United States, America leads, we're the indispensable nation. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Putin seems to be challenging that leadership. In what way? Let, let's think about this. Well, he's moved, let, he's, let, let, he's moved troops into, yeah. uh, into Syria. In what one. way? Yeah. He's got people on the ground. Right. Two, uh -huh. the Russians yeah. are conducting military operations in, in the Middle East for the first time since World War II. So that's so bombing that's, the people yeah. uh, that we are supporting. So that's leading, Steve? The, uh, you so the, uh, let, you got to stop right question. here. Did you, do you, you hear how brave all. Steve Croft is and how, 
how absolutely incompetent the president